Hello. A couple of weeks ago, Goodreads posted a list of the 100 most popular science fiction novels, according to them. Uh, so I want to make a video looking through this list uh, because some of these books I've read, um, some I've been wanting to read, and others I've never even heard of before. So I'd be really interested to hear from you of which uh, books on these lists are have you read and are your favorites, uh, which are you interested in reading, and what books do you think have been left? off this list, um, which are you think are the greatest science fiction novels of all time. Because another fun sort of challenge about this list is if you're a fan of science fiction, um, how many of these books on this list have you actually read? Um, I'd be interested to know that in the, the comments below. I mean, this list sort of caught my eye because uh, one of the books on it is Dune by Frank Herbert, um, which is a novel I talked about in a video I made about classic books that I want to read this year and uh, how I want to get into reading more science fiction. So I think this list will provide a good guide on uh, what science fiction novels to read first. I have to say I was a bit surprised when looking at this at first uh, because there are some dystopian novels here uh, which I never really thought of as sci-fi before. For some reason the two genres have always been quite distinct in my mind, but I guess it makes sense that there's a lot of crossover uh, between how these novels can be classified and defined. Uh, because science fiction often explores the consequences of scientific, social, and technological innovations, and dystopian fiction explores social and political structures. And I know there's endless debate about how science fiction is defined and how it can be classified uh, amongst readers and authors, and I'm not going to get into that whole debate here because it'll take far too long. Uh, but how Goodreads made this list was it looked at uh, the most read uh, science fiction novels um, in their entire catalog and also their highest rated um, science fiction books in their catalog and so it sort of ranked them um, doing that and also when there is a series of books um, by the same author it um, it only picked one of those books um, and instead of you know including that whole series um, amongst this list to give it some more diversity and you'll see what I mean about dystopian fiction um, because some of the first choices on this list are novels that I think of as more classic dystopian fiction. Um, so the very first book on the list, of course, is 1984 by George Orwell, his incredible novel about totalitarianism and mass surveillance. And this novel, like unlike any other that I can really think of, has had such a massive effect and crossover in being both a very popular novel that lots of people read and loved, um, but has also entered the political dialogue of how, you know, I mean, when people have political debates, they often use terms um, that are brought up in this, that were created in this novel, uh, you know, like Big Brother and Double Think, Thought Crimes and Memory Holes, um, you know, so there are all these terms which, and, uh, and a whole sort of system of political thought that I think is like arisen and sort of is called Orwellian. Um, so yeah, I, I think um, this novel is so incredible. But yeah, it's not one that I really think of as science fiction. But I mean, yeah, I guess it, it really is in, in its sort of structure and how the system uses technology to control the population. Next on the list is another novel by George Orwell, uh, Animal Farm, um, which is another book I don't really think of as science fiction. Um, it's a brilliant allegorical novel um, that he wrote, a, you know, about a farmyard where uh, animals rise up against the humans which control them and form their own society. But like a lot of uh, plans to overturn society and create one anew, things don't go as planned. And, you know, there's the classic concept in this that all animals are created equal, but some are more equal than others. And that relates to a lot of totalitarian regimes like the Soviet Union um, that inspired George Orwell to, to write this. And I think this is so well known and much beloved because this uh, novel, which is quite short and very easy to read and is taught in so many schools. Um, so, you know, I read it, I think, when I was in middle school when it was assigned to me, you know, and I, I really loved it. I'd, I really ought to revisit it at some point. Um, but if you love George Orwell's fiction, I'd really uh, encourage you to read some of his other books as well, which I think aren't as well read. But um, I 
think are equally brilliant and definitely aren't science fiction novels. So like his novel, Keep the Aspidistra Flying, um, which Ariel Bissett talked about in a video recently, and which is a novel I really love as well. Um, it's all about um, money and the struggle of being a capitalist consumer in our society, um, but it's told in a really fun and engaging way. Um, there's also Burmese days and uh, a clergyman's daughter. And yeah, so there, there's lots more to explore with George Orwell. Number three is Ray Bradbury's uh, brilliant novel Fahrenheit 451. I think I also read this when I was a teenager and absolutely loved it about a future where uh, books have become illegal and uh, a fireman who's at the center of the novel is charged with burning some of these books, but then he starts reading some of them as well. And so the whole complications that are involved in that. And I, whenever I see this novel now, I always think of Susan Orlean's uh, nonfiction book, the, the library book, um, because in there she talks about this um, this library in Los Angeles, um, which burned in this notorious fire. And the irony that um, this library was one that uh, Ray Bradbury used a lot um, in his early days. Brave New Worlds by Aldous Huxley, another classic dystopian novel I read when I was a teenager about a futuristic world state uh, where there are genetically modified humans and uh, there are social hierarchies based on intelligence. And like George Orwell, there is so much more of Aldous Huxley's fiction to explore. So after, you know, I first read this book as a teenager, I went on to read some of his other novels like Point Counterpoint um, that is really interesting and good. The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood about the Republic of Gilead where women's bodies are regulated and controlled in this totalitarian system. And I reread this novel last year before uh, the sequel finally came out. And I have to say, I really enjoyed revisiting this book and found it was really skillfully crafted as well as saying a lot of things which are obviously still very relevant. And I think people are often quite harsh on this novel in a way which I think is slightly unfair. And this novel, again, like George Orwell's 1984, you know, so much in this book has entered into our dialogue, our political dialogue of ways we talk about things and actually in, in, in active protests that take place, you know, people actively reference this novel and dress up as handmaidens. Um, so I think it's incredible how, you know, fiction can cross over into real life society like this. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. This is the first novel on the, the list that I haven't read. And but it's a novel that sat on my shelves all through my teenage years. And I always meant to get to it. And I really regret that I didn't read it at that sort of young formative age. Um, so this is a novel about a man who's plucked off from Earth seconds before uh, it is destroyed to make room for this galactic highway and about how he and his friend are researching a, a new edition of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, so yeah, I've uh, really meant to, to read this novel because it sounds like a lot of fun. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, this brilliant classic novel from 1818 uh, about a scientist uh, named Dr. Frankenstein who resurrects a man from the dead, reanimates him and creates a monster. Um, this has been such a hugely influential novel. I only read it for the first time a couple of years ago and absolutely loved it. It was much different than I sort of imagined the novel would be. Um, there's so many surprises in this book. It's so thoughtful and cleverly constructed. And I think it's wonderful that it's still read and loved so much. Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut Jr., this classic anti-war novel about fire bombings in Dresden and a man's odyssey through time and mythic journey. Uh, this is another novel which sat on my bookshelves all through my teenage years and I just never got around to reading it, although I read some other Kurt Vonnegut Jr. novels, um, so yeah, I really should have got to it. Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card uh, about a society that's besieged by a hostile alien race and so in order to defend that, the government um, creates these child geniuses which they train as soldiers. Ready Player One by Ernest Cline, where Earth has become a horrible place and a teenage boy prefers to escape in the uh, virtual utopia of a game he plays and the different clues that he needs to, to find there. And of course, there's sort of crossover then into to real life consequences. And uh, there was a movie made of this fairly recently, which I enjoyed, but um, didn't wasn't hugely memorable for me. So maybe the novel is better. The Martian by Andy 
where uh, this novel, which is sort of dubbed Robinson Crusoe on Mars, uh, because it's about an astronaut that becomes trapped on the planet of Mars and a rescue mission to try to retrieve him. But in the meantime, he has to uh, do innovative things to try to survive on the planet. And uh, this is an incredible breakout novel, wasn't it? Because I think wasn't this novel first self-published and then it became, you know, this huge sensation and really popular and then become, you know, turned into a, a huge movie and all of this stuff and and I did read it a few years ago and I I sort of enjoyed aspects of it but I thought other parts of it were clunky and some parts of it were kind of misogynistic and a bit icky um, but yeah I, I did sort of enjoy it. Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. Dinosaurs are resurrected on an island and everything goes wrong and everyone's water glasses are trembling. Uh, I read this novel when I was in middle school and absolutely loved it. Um, it's, I think, probably one of the books that really got me into reading fiction in general. So yeah, it's a book I'd really recommend to any adolescents wanting to get into fiction or parents who want to get their children into reading. Dune by Frank Herbert, set on a desert planet where an heir to a noble family is tasked with uh, overseeing this inhospitable world. And there's a valuable element called spice, um, which extends people's lives and expands their consciousness. Um, so this is a novel that, yeah, I really, a classic novel I really want to, to read and there's going to be a, a remake of a film of it later this year or hopefully later this year. Maybe it'll come out next year given how everything is going. But uh, but yeah, I'd really want to, to read this novel because friends of mine um, have read it and really loved it. And actually, my elder nephew is reading it at the moment. So it'd be great to discuss it with him. The Road by Cormac McCarthy. This is another novel that I definitely think is as dystopian novel rather than science fiction. Uh, but anyway, it uh, it's such a brilliant, poignant novel about a father and son traveling on a road in a in a worlds that has been completely decimated and destroyed and their relationship and struggle to survive. And yeah, I think this is such a beautiful novel, but also an absolutely terrifying one. The Stand by Stephen King, uh, where a computer error in a defense laboratory leads to millions of deaths and uh, a reef shuffle of society um, where there's this big struggle between good and evil amongst the population. And uh, I remember watching, I haven't read this novel, but I watched the TV, I think there was a TV series adaptation of it, which I absolutely loved. And I should go back to reading Stephen King because, um, you know, after all, he's from Maine, where I'm also from. A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess, a nightmare vision of the future where very violent criminal gains are basically ruling society and so the the government's very strict measures to try to combat that and psychologically control these and manipulate um, the, these criminals and the whole ethical questions involved in that and it's written in such a unique um, distinct style and way and of course this was made into a very classic um, film as well which is absolutely brilliant. Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes uh, where brain surgery on a mouse makes that mouse into a genius and a dull-witted man wonders if that same surgery can work for him. Um, I know this is a much beloved novel, but I've never read it uh, myself, so I'd really like to get to it. Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro, uh, where a group of friends have been bred um, so that their body parts can be farmed and all of the ethical questions that um, arise from that and about what makes us human. Um, now, I'm a huge fan of Ishiguro's writing, but I have to say this is my least favorite of his novels. Um, so... The Time Machine by H.G. Wells about a scientist that travels very far into the future where humans have evolved into two very distinct races and it's this whole dystopian sort of landscape that he discovers there. Now I'm very ashamed to say I've never read any H.G. Wells so I know if I want to get into reading science fiction I really ought to read some H.G. Wells but um, this is another novel that was made into a classic film which I absolutely loved like the earlier version of of this film. I think there was a, a more recent version, which wasn't as good, but uh, but I love the classic version of the film. Foundation by Isaac Asimov, um, where a galactic empire has ruled for thousands of years, and there's a man who can see into the future and knows that a sort of 
barbarians are going to start ruling uh, the universe. And so he wants to preserve all of the, the knowledge and progress that has been made. Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. This is a novel that I read in my teenage years, but I don't really remember it all that clearly. Um, it's a science fiction satire about witnessing Armageddon and then the consequences of surviving it. To Androids, Dream of Sheep by Philip K. Dick, uh, this classic novel about a, a man in the future um, who's charged with seeking out androids who are living amongst humans and pretending to, to be humans. And uh, I've not read the, the novel, but of course this was made into the very classic film Blade Runner, which is a movie that took me a while to come around to. Um, when I first watched it, I thought it was a bit dull, to, to be honest, but um, but my friends forced me to, to watch it and rewatch it. And I have to admit, you know, this is a, a brilliant film. So I would like to go back and, and read the novel novel now. Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel uh, about a dystopian future and a group of performers that travel around um, performing Shakespeare and uh, I hugely enjoyed this this novel. Um, I've still not read her most recent novel that was published this year. I've heard some very mixed things about it but I'd be keen to read that as well. Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert A. Heinlein about a human being that is raised on Mars um, who really struggles to understand social mores and prejudices of the human race uh, which feel very alien to him. I, Robot by Isaac Asimov, a series of stories about the development of robots and how humans try to control these robots with some very strict laws but about how robots sometimes go mad. Neuromancer by William Gibson about a man who specializes in data theft and how he tries to battle against this powerful artificial intelligence. 2001 a Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke about humankind's evolution and about uh, the threat of artificial intelligence um, to possibly control and dominate us. Uh, so this is another novel that was made into a classic film. I think so much of science fiction, you know, is really fruitful material for um, films because it's so imaginative. And uh, But I've never read the novel, but I've heard the novels even better than the brilliant movie. The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. Uh, another H.G. Wells novel that I should have read about how an alien race comes to Earth and tries to dominate and control the planet. Dark Matter by Blake Crouch about a man who's walking home on an ordinary evening in Chicago and is knocked unconscious and he wakes up in another world and the question is what is reality? Is it this new world that he's woken up in or is it the, the reality that he's always thought of as reality? <laughs> Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson, um, which asks the question, what comes after the internet? And in this novel, it's a place called the Metaverse, which is inhabited by avatars and software demons. So asks a whole new series of questions about how society functions in this new digital universe. Red Rising by Pierce Brown, about a color-coded society of the future where a man is born into a lower caste um, called the Reds, and how he tries to make Mars a habitable place for a society of the future. The Andromeda Strain by Michael Crichton, uh, the second Michael Crichton novel on this list, but one I've not read, uh, about a deadly organism that is brought from outer space um, to the planet and about a group of biophysicists who try to um, suppress and stop it from destroying humanity. Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood, which is set far in the future where most of humankind has been wiped out by a plague and um, some very different evolved beings have come to uh, populate the, the planet. Um, but mostly this is a love story and I really enjoyed um, this novel, but I've not read the next two in the trilogy of the books. Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Um, I think it's very tricky to put this, this novel in here as or classified just as science fiction because it's really a book of many different genres and a number of different stories all written in different genres um, which show the progression of mankind. And I guess because there's this overarching theme about mankind's 
progression um, that it can be classified as as that. But uh, but yeah, this is a novel which I definitely enjoyed sections of, but not the entirety of the novel. But I think it's a brilliant construction overall. The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury um, about humankind's repeated attempts to try to colonize the planet of Mars. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne, another classic author, classic science fiction author I've never read and I feel sort of ashamed. I've never actually read him and should have when I was younger. Um, so this is the story of the Nautilus, a submarine headed by Captain Nemo and his um, journey to try to find a sea monster in the bottom of the ocean that's been destroying a number of ships. Blindness by Jose Saramago, this brilliant novel uh, by a Nobel Prize winner um, uh, where humanity um, starts to go blind but rather than seeing black they all just see white and about how uh, one character is still able to see and the, the consequences of this band of people moving and trying to survive in this new society of blindness and uh, it was also made into a really moving film which um, a lot of people sort of like dismissed and criticized really highly um, but, but I thought was really well done. Starship Troopers by Robert A. Heinlein about humankind's struggle to fight against giant intelligent bugs and um, this was made into a hilarious um, satirical film and it's seen as a satire but I've known some people have criticized this novel as being like pro-fascist so it'd be really interesting to hear what you think uh, about this novel. Hyperion by Dan Simmons. This is about a world where there's a creature known as the Shrike who some people worship and some people really fear and then there are some people who want to destroy it. The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick. Um, so this is about a sort of alternative history where in World War II instead of um, America and the Allied forces winning, um, America is taken over by Nazi Germany and by Japan and so it's controlled by those two political forces and the story of a number of individuals involved in that. I've not read the novel but I watched some of the popular series um, that was created recently and I sort of enjoyed it at first but then I got a bit bored of it. Artemis by Andy Weir, another novel by Andy Weir on this list about the first and only city on the moon um, which you wouldn't want to visit unless you are very rich. Uh, so I don't know if I'd want to read more of his fiction but let me know if you've read this and think it's um, better than The Martian. Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey um, where humankind has uh, populated and colonized the entire solar system and is now looking beyond to the stars and this is the story of an ice miner that discovers an abandoned ship and the whole mystery behind that. Wool by Hugh Howey. This is a post-apocalyptic thriller um, set in a future um, where the world has been completely ruined and a community exists in a silo underground and about the, the struggles of that community in this horrible future. And this is another self-published ebook um, that became a huge phenomenon and a big bestseller. Old Man's War by John Scalzi. Um, this is about a 75-year-old man who joins the army to fight in humanity's quest to try to colonize other worlds um, where they have to battle against alien races to try to inhabit them. Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. This is about a space known as Area X which has been cut off from society for uh, multiple decades and about a group that travels into this area um, which at first seems like an Edenistic landscape um, but then becomes very sinister. Um, I've never read any Jeff Vandermeer but I've always wanted to. The Power by Naomi Alderman uh, which won the Women's Prize for Fiction and is about a uh, society where uh, women find they are able to harness this primeval power um, to use electricity to control men and uh, so society becomes this new female dominated civilization um, which uh, isn't the uh, sort of utopian landscape that they envisioned it would be. The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells uh, about a man who has been made invisible through this new technology and how he has to wrap himself in bandages in order to um, be able to move in society and how he tries to find an antidote for it and when um, the scientist um, who's responsible for this technology doesn't want to help him um, he tries to take his revenge. The Forever War by Joe Haldsman. This is about a reluctant conscript who is drafted into an elite military unit 
Bridge, uh, who has to go fight an alien race across the universe. Rendezvous with Rama by Arthur C. Clarke. This is about a space object um, which astronomers notice hurtling through space at an incredible speed and which weighs a lot. Um, and then it's discovered that this object is actually a spacecraft of an alien race. The Three Body Problem by C. Sin Liu. This is set amidst uh, China's cultural revolution and about an attempt to connect with and make contact with an alien race. And when they make that contact, they find this dying alien race wants to dominate the planet. Childhood's End by Arthur C. Clarke. This is about a group of overlords which have taken over the world because they're in every way superior um, to the rest of humankind. And there's very little resistance to this takeover and it heralds this new golden age. But uh, the question is, what is the cost of this? Contact by Carl Sagan. This is about a radio message which reaches Earth from the distant stars. And it's a coded message about how to create a ship to travel to those stars. And so it's about the, the process of that and about how this alien race has been observing uh Earth for a very long time and is now ready to judge us. Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. Um, this is credited as the first science fiction novel by a black woman. Um, so it's a combination of slave memoir and fantasy and historical fiction about an African-American woman who can travel through time and the consequences of that. The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is set on an ice planet called Winter uh, that is inhabited inhabited by beings which have no gender and during their mating cycle they can be either male or female. Um, so I think it gives a really interesting perspective on gender. The Sirens of Titan by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. This is about a very rich, depraved man who's offered the chance to travel across space um, with a beautiful woman at his side to distant worlds and about the consequences of that. The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by Robert A. Heinlein. This is about a penal colony on Luna and about how a group of revolutionaries seek to overthrow the authority. Rainworlds by Larry Niven. Um, this is a novel about puppeteers, which are three-legged, two-headed aliens. And um, some of these alien beings travel with humans to an immense unexplored part of the universe and it's about their journey. Cryptonomicon by Neil Stevenson. This is another novel which I think sort of looks at alternative histories because it's about people who are able to bend time and go back to sort of reshape history and it's looking at the secret histories of nations. The Passage by Justin Cronin. This is about a chilling military experiment which goes very wrong and causes chaos across humanity um, very quickly and about how the survivors have to try to make their way in this new world. Parable of Sorrow by Octavia E. Butler. This is set in the year 2025 uh, where the world has been consumed by anarchy and crisis and about one woman's journey um, to try to find a better future. Dick Gently's Holistic Detective Agency by Douglas Adams. This novel is described as a ghost horror time travel romance romantic comedy epic, uh, which is the most intriguing description I think I've ever heard for a book. The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell. This novel was first published in 1997, but it's set in the year 2019. So it's one of these future set novels where we've gotten to a point where we're actually beyond the year where it's set. Uh, but in this novel, humanity um, finds proof of extraterrestrial life in the signal that um, comes from this other race. And while the United Nations is struggling to decide how and um, whether they should contact this alien race. A um, group known as the Society of Jesus decides to take it upon themselves to make contact with them and it's about the consequences of that and the question of what it means to be human. The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is another one of those great success stories of a self-published novel which has become a phenomenon and uh, 
so this is about a crew on a ship made up of humans and aliens and about their their journey across the universe. I absolutely love this novel. I thought it was so intriguing and wonderful in its story. It completely gripped me and turned me on to science fiction and made me want to read more of it. Um, although I've heard the next two books in the series don't quite live up to this first novel, so I haven't got around to reading them. But let me know what you think if you've read this entire series. The Moat in God's Eye by Larry Niven. This is set in the year 3016, so we have a long way to go before we get we get past where this novel is, is set. Um, but the empire of man has spread across the universe um, in this very future set point, and they discover a ancient civilization um, hidden in a star system, and how this ancient civilization has been wrestling with this big question and problem um, through the ages. A Canticle for Leibovitz by Walter M. Miller Jr. In this novel, the earth has been scoured clean by a flame deluge, and an order of monks has witnessed humanity's destruction and its rebirth from the ashes. Seven Ives by Neil Stevenson. In this novel, the world has become a ticking time bomb, and everyone knows that it's going to end, so the nations band together to try to form a quest um, to save humanity and travel across the solar system. The Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. This is about a man who wakes up in a hospital blindfolded, and uh, when he takes it off, he discovers that the rest of humanity has been rendered blind uh, by a meteor shower, and there are plant beings that uh, can walk the earth and who feed on human flesh. A Scanner Darkly by Philip K. Dick. This is about a man who is a junkie and a drug dealer um, who uses and sells this mind-altering substance and a government agent who is charged with bringing him down. Altered Carbon by Richard K. Morgan. Uh, this is set in a very future point where technology has advanced, uh, where human consciousness can be downloaded loaded and put into another body. Red Shirts by John Scalzi. This is a novel about a man who's promoted to a very prestigious position on a spaceship, uh, but he finds that this new position comes with unexpected consequences uh, about meeting and confronting alien races. The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is about a brilliant physicist who decides to try to break down the barriers between his planet of anarchists and the rest of the civilized universe. Recursion by Blake Crouch. This is a novel about an affliction which is spreading across humanity um, called False Memory Syndrome, where people find themselves beset by memories of lives that they've never led, and it drives them mad, and a New York City cop who starts investigating uh, this problem. Ancillary Sword by Anne Leckie. This is about a soldier who was once a warship that was a weapon uh, who controlled controlled thousands of minds, uh, but now has to inhabit a single female body and serves an emperor. The Illustrated Man by Ray Bradbury. This is actually composed of 16 different, uh, very eerie and profound tales. Doomsday Book by Connie Willis. This is about a researcher who finds a strange connection between strands of a past and a future deadly disease. Binti by Nidhi Okafor. Um, this is about a young woman um, who is the first First of her people who is offered a place at a prestigious university across the universe um, and when she travels there to join it she finds that uh, the other beings there don't respect her customs or her way of life. Shards of Honor by Lewis McMaster Bejold. Um, this is about a starship that is um, taken over by another spaceship and how the, the female um, commander of that ship um, struggles to survive. Consider Flavis by Ian M. Banks. Um, this is about a war that ravages the entire galaxy, not only destroying all the beings, but all of the, the stars and the planets. And it's about a fugitive mind on a planet of the dead. Out of the Silent Planet by C.S. Lewis. This is about a Cambridge academic who's abducted and taken on a spaceship to Mars. Solaris by Stanislaw Lem. Um, this is about space explorers um, who discover an ocean-covered planet 
and on that planet they find um, hidden parts of their consciousness which are embedded in the likeness of former lovers. Heir to the Empire by Timothy Zahn. I've never read any of these Star Wars um, books sort of spinning off from uh, the whole Star Wars series. Um, this novel follows Luke Skywalker five years after the destruction of the Death Star and the end of the Empire. Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chain. This is a collection of short stories by a much acclaimed uh, award-winning science fiction author that asks big questions about uh, humanity and science and religion. So it spans a whole range of subjects in different fictional universes. All Systems Read by Martha Wells. Um, this is set in a corporate dominated space-faring future uh, where different missions uh, to planets um, involve androids um, being aboard the ships and the um, the lives of the crew aren't the top priority of these spacefaring missions because it's the corporation's priorities which are the top concerns. Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Humanity's last survivors escape a ruined planet Earth to try to find a new planet to inhabit but there they discover new dangers. We Are Legion, We Are Bob by Dennis E. Taylor. Uh, this is a novel about a man named Bob who sells his software company and has his whole life to look forward to but then he's killed uh, when crossing the street and he wakes up a century later as a corpsicle and he discovers there that corpsicles are owned and controlled by the state. Red Mars by Kim Stanley Robinson. There are so many science fiction novels about the planet of Mars and this novel is about uh, 100 people who in the year 2026 travel to Mars to try to be the first colonizers of the planet. Lock-In by John Scalzi. Uh, this novel might be hard to read at the, the current time with the current pandemic. Um, it's about a new uh, highly contagious disease which spreads across the entire world and the um, people who are afflicted by it find themselves locked into their own body where they're fully aware and conscious but they're unable to move or to respond to anything. So yeah, sounds really terrifying. The Humans by Matt Haig. Uh, this is a novel uh, which is a comedy but also a love story uh, about alien abduction and mathematics and ourselves. The Lawn Earth. Uh, this novel is a collaboration between Terry Pratchett and Stephen Baxter and it's a novel set both in the years 1916 and 2015. 15, and uh, the story spans across time uh, to the ends of the earth and beyond. Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. This is about a girl who's riding her bicycle near her home in South Dakota um, and then she falls through the earth and she discovers there strange intricate carvings on the walls but the firemen who come to rescue her discover, look down and see that she's in the palm of a giant. Vox by Christina Dalsher. This novel is set in America uh, where half the population has been silenced and about a mother who struggles to protect her daughter. Severance by Lynn Ma. This is about a drone who is sequestered in a Manhattan office tower um, and she's so entrenched in her routines that she doesn't even notice that a plague of biblical proportions is spreading across New York. Exhalation by Ted Chain. This is a collection of nine short stories which asks some of humanity's oldest questions and some new ones. This is How You Lose the Time War by Amal L. Matar. Uh, this is set in the ashes of a dying world where two rival agents try to secure the best possible future for their warring factions. The Paper Menagerie and Other Stories by Ken Liu. This is a collection of short stories which are uh, both science fiction and fantasy from a best-selling author. Gideon the Ninth by Tasman Muir. This is about a woman ready to abandon her life of servitude and an afterlife as an anime corpse. The Collapsing Empire by John Scalzi. This is described as a space opera uh, where scientists discover something called the flow um, which is able to access different points of space time uh, to travel across the galaxy and to different stars. American War by Omar al Akkad. Um, this is set in the year 2074 where a second civil war has broken out in America and about a woman from Louisiana who is forced 
forced into a camp where she is turned into a deadly instrument for war. The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Cowell. Uh, this is set in the year 1952 when a meteorite strikes the and destroys the east coast of the United States and causes this cataclysmic event um, which is going to uh, affect the entire planet and so the rest of civilization knows that they need to seek another planet to live on and it's about a woman who is bent on becoming the first female astronaut um, no matter what it takes. Provenance by Anne Leckie. This is about a power-driven young woman who wants to secure her status and acquire lost artifacts from a prison planet um, from which no one has returned. So those are the 100 novels. Quite a lot to digest, uh, but lots of fascinating sounding ones that I'd really like to read. Um, so let me know what your favorites are from this list or there, if there are other ones that you want to suggest. So thank you for watching. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.